mostly what we've seen Vance in our world is I would like to lose body fat and I would like to gain muscle at the same time, please. <laughs> that's the, that's the big uh, secret thing, isn't it? And that's, um, that's, that's difficult. Uh, some yeah. would say almost impossible. I don't know if it's impossible. It's a lot more difficult than what people think. Yeah, I hear that a lot. So uh, um, when I start a session with a with a new client or something like that, they say I weigh I weigh this. So I weigh let's say two ten, and they would like to stay two ten, and um, but gain uh, twenty pounds of muscle and lose twenty pounds of, of body fat, right? So that's not like 100% unachievable. You have some 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 people who do have the genetics to, to maybe do that. Um, but you really should just focus on one goal first. Um, if you look at the kind of average people, average folks, if you look at research on either weight loss studies or muscle building uh, programs that they put these uh, people on, and they, they're typically done with physical education students because that's what's available for research uh, college students, that sort of thing, physical education students. So these are people who are kind of into fitness, uh, usually into strength training, and they'll put them on diet and they'll lose body fat, X amount of body fat over eight weeks or 12 weeks. And they usually will put on a little, a few pounds of, of muscle as well, but it's not a complete transformation. That's what people want. They want a 12 week complete transformation. It's better to look at, well, what would I like to look like maybe four months from now if the answer is i would like to look leaner then your goal should be weight loss that should be your goal and if you're eating enough protein and training hard enough have a good training program you will put on a little bit of muscle if your goal is to be a lot more muscular four months from now say i, I would really like five to ten pounds of muscle i'm kind of new at this um then that should be your goal you should, you should probably be eating in a calorie surplus and if you're relatively new, you will actually lose a little bit of fat. Um, but again, it's not going to be like you're going to lose 20 pounds of fat and put on uh, 10 pounds of muscle. It's going to be like, oh, I lose two or three pounds of fat, but I'm more muscular. My, my clothes fit better. I, I look better. So take one goal at a time is usually the, the approach. Unless you're really just kind of, you know, I want to lose a, a couple pounds of fat and put on a couple pounds of muscle and I weigh 190 pounds and I like to stay there. That's a, an achievable goal. You're not looking, for, but if you're looking for a big transformation, it's usually like you have to one goal at a time. And uh, what's the most important to you? You put that first, which oftentimes is lose the body fat. And then if you slowly eat in a small calorie surplus, especially if you're a novice, like you haven't been training for 10 years and all this kind of stuff, um, you can usually put on a good amount of muscle mass without accumulating much, if any, fat if you're relatively uh, new to this or untrained or it's been a long time since you actually um, had a good fitness plan. It's a, On that note, is it safe to say that we are, especially us men trying to get into this world and get in better shape, we're fatter than what we think we are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too is... Um, People sometimes get disappointed by the way they look when they do lose the 20 pounds of fat or they discover like they weigh 200 pounds. They think I'll just get down to 180 and that 180 will just be shredded muscle. And they realize that to get shredded, they actually have to lose 40 pounds. There you right? go. Yep. Because they have they have some muscle, but it's disguised by a layer of fat and they don't realize that that muscle they thought they had wasn't muscle that, that, that it was fat. So <laughs> sometimes common, it can yeah. be kind of discouraging. Um, but yeah, I would say get to the, get to the body fat you want to be that you're comfortable with, not too lean, you know, that sort of thing. And then just try to slowly um, build muscle over time. And it's a very long, arduous process because unfortunately it's mathematically, it's easier to lose body fat than put on muscle. Uh, new yes. muscle takes a long, a long time. Uh, it's difficult psychologically for some people to lose a lot of body fat, but in terms of mathematics are concerned, just thermogenesis, it's, it's relatively easy. If you stop eating, you'll, you'll lose all kinds of fat really, really fast, right? But you can train your butt off and it's going to be slow no matter what, mm -hmm. um, to put on the muscle mass. A lot of different ways to take this conversation, but we're talking about the stop eating part, is that not 
basically what is happening with these semi-glutides, like uh, Ozempic is the big name brand. It, in essence, lowers your appetite, so you stop eating so much, so you lose weight like crazy. That's not a magic formula. It's just, that's basically it, is it not? It's just the old calories in and out. Yeah, and um, not just the medical side, but the diet side. Anything that kind of works on the brain and prevents you from eating less seems to be the only widespread um kind of the only widespread uh good evidence we have that you're going to lose weight um because biologically most people are designed us as a species are designed to just eat and eat and eat until we're full because we no longer have uh we no longer have uh food shortages and that sort of thing uh, unless you're desperately poor of course so um, it's easy to make a domestic dog obese, right? Because they're designed to kill to kill the deer, if they're a wolf, to kill the deer and eat and eat and eat because they don't know when the next deer will be available. Humans are, are kind of like that too. There is variability between genetics. Some people are, are they have a difficult time gaining weight. Um, but most of us, the average human being is designed to, we don't know when our, our next famine is going to be. You know, if you live 2,000 years ago, you don't know when your next family is going to be. So eat and eat and uh, accumulate body body weight. So the, so um, appetite suppression, whether that's through a ketogenic diet, through fasting, through medication like Ozempic, if you can take away the desire to eat, seems to be the only uh, very successful way to prevent obesity. We've you know, you can give people all the education, like you eat this amount of calories, but to get them to do it is, is kind of the difficult yeah. part. Like but a, but the, like a, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Like a registered, like a dietitian is good. Like dietitians help a lot of people. Um, but you're almost sometimes better off going to see a, a therapist or a psychologist to figure out why you overeat versus just like, you know, eat your fruits and vegetables, eat this amount of calories, eat this amount of protein, because it's hard to, to change the behavioral side of it, which Ozempic does that for you. I mean, it's very powerful. Um, hunger suppressant is, is the main yeah. thing. You, um, in, in the people who are um, affected by it in, in a positive way, sometimes have difficulty eating enough, even. It can be that powerful too. For them. And, and I think this is why some people are pointing to be careful when you're on those Ozempics and whatever the other name brands are, um, you could potentially lose a lot of muscle mass. And that's well, that's because you're not eating enough to maintain. So everything just yeah. shrinks down. It's not like it targets your muscles or anything. Um, it's just that, uh, yeah, appetite goes down, you yeah. eat less, which all points to the, the end lesson here is it is after all just a calories in and out thing, isn't it? When it comes to weight gain and weight loss. Yeah, for the most part, there's a, there's some nuance to to macronutrients and micronutrients and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I always say if somebody says you know it's 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 not calories, it's something else. It's just insulin or the, or that sort of thing. That's mostly been debunked because we have lots of we have t lots of studies now that compare different types of macronutrient diets. The all you know, the high carb, low fat versus the low carb, all that kind of stuff. And you see very similar outcomes when mm. calories are equated. So yeah, it's all about just kind of controlling the number of calories you eat. However, we can actually do it. With that being said, I would assume if I'm on a 2000 calorie diet of steak and salad, my blood values, my lipids, my overall body composition may be different than if I'm on a 2000 calorie diet of Twinkies, I would assume. Yeah. 